So yesterday we played you audio clips from uh, the Limpopo Health MEC berating members at a facility in the province last week. She'd made an unannounced visit at Retabile Clinic in Pulugwane after receiving reports that patients were not being allowed to enter the facility without wearing face masks and that the staff there were in fact selling those masks to patients. She went to investigate and expressed her displeasure at what she found. When I speak as a supervisor, I expected when there is a disaster to be sitting here. When there is a disaster, I can't go on leave. When there is a disaster of escort, the president has cancelled World Economic Forum. That's when there is a disaster. So no, and you can't be the first one to go on, on, on lunch when there is a disaster and leave the junior staff there. You should be here and coming up with a way on how to resolve this matter. Well, as you would remember, there were mixed reactions from many of you about her intervention. Some of you said she was grandstanding, while some of you said this is exactly the kind of strong leadership we need. Well, the Limpopo Health MEC, Dr. Popi Ramatuba, I'm pleased to tell you, joins us now to speak in her own words. Thank you so much for your time this morning and welcome to 702 Breakfast. Uh, morning, Bongani, and morning to all your listeners out there. And, and thank you for giving us this opportunity. All right. Do I have it right in terms of what prompted your visit? You had heard uh, reports that worried you about uh, the facility you went to visit. Uh, tell us about uh, what prompted that visit. Uh, firstly, I must indicate that we have adopted long time ago the style of leadership that we can't uh, stay in our offices looking at the sector that we are really leading. We've got to be on the ground to experience what the patients are experiencing. Because sitting in the office and wait for reports, managers and administrators always give us colorful, beautiful, decorated reports. Now, as part of those unannounced visits, we do visit several facilities. Some we get good stories. Of course, they won't trend because they are good stories. Some we found were young managers who have turned around facilities. Those stories will not trend. But this time around, there are so many complaints that we've received from Retabil. And if you look at the HOD, she has on a several location put up teams to try to do investigations. And when you look at um, intervention strategies that they are put, they are not being implemented. Civil society, for instance, reached their project when they, they did their own uh, findings, which are some of them are not good, and they've made uh, recommendations, nothing has been implemented. If you look at other facilities where Richards have made recommendations, you see things are really improving to the bed. So in this particular facility, one of the issues that really pains me a lot was the waiting time, especially on the pregnant women. And, 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 and here we're talking about a, a, a life of a mother and unborn child. And secondly, it was on the issue that patients who visit these clinics are subjected to say you have to have a mask if you can't have one you must buy there at the clinic gate otherwise patients are returned and are told you can't access health care so so that i really found it not uh, being in order because yeah. patients that we visit in our clinics uh, do not have a, a money and when you deny somebody access to health care you are contravening the very same constitutions of this country. So those are the two areas which, despite other areas that are found, but these two areas of the waiting time and the issue of selling of masks were the issues that really uh, have been a serious concern and which needed to be addressed there and there and could not wait for boardroom meetings. So when you went on your uh, inspection, you found that uh, the place was overcrowded and you found, I think, was it security guards who were selling these masks? The, the security guards directed me to say there is a lady who's selling the mask because the allegation is to say the mask are sold at the, at the security uh, gate um, and, and security guards says they are not the ones who are selling the mask, uh, the, but the masks are being sold. As to, is there any conniving there? that I've left it to the team to investigate as to what is happening because the allegations further says some of these marks that are being sold are probably the marks that we provide. Because what I advise the, the, 
nurses because firstly i needed to know from the clinic manager what is the reason because now the president has relaxed has pronounced on the mask the minister limpopo premier has never said limpopo must use mask so yeah. it can't be a misrama to bus facility being the only one that forced people to wear masks but if you've got a valid clinical reasons which they've provided to me to say they are worried about tb new infections and mdr then i said then it means you must have capacity to provide the mask to the patient who can't afford no patient must be retained because they don't have mask now they say they do give the security guard a box for those patients who can't afford but to my surprise the security guard says when you don't have a mask go and buy from that particular person so that's what i'm saying that matter still needs more investigations gotcha. so that we can know exactly gotcha. what is happening. Let me ask you this. How much pressure do you think is on facilities like Retabile due to any number of issues, understaffing, a lack of resources? In other words, one will know that there's always overcrowding in many of these kinds of facilities. And I would imagine at Retabile, it wasn't unique to that day. At, what we want to indicate is to say we are alive to the fact that due to chronic underfunding of the public health system, we have got serious uh, shortage. It's impacting on our ability to appoint new personnel. We also have got challenges in terms of infrastructure improvement. But we must also be alive to the fact that some of the managers that we are currently having do not inspire confidence. I'm, I'm saying this because the reality is that, yes, Ritabile, it's one of the busiest facilities because its location, geographic location, make it accessible in terms of public transport. But when you look at how the facility is being run, it, it raises concern. For instance, why can't you, you have a help desk wherein you put a person like they are doing in other facilities? When somebody comes in, a pregnant women are directed correctly, children for immunization, chronic and whatever there's somebody who's showing them so that somebody dance doesn't sit in a queue for eight hours only to be told you are in the wrong queue so so those yeah. systems that are basic are not being put in in, in, in place. sure so in the issues of oh, so sorry in the issue of the shortage of staff i just want to demonstrate to say while yes i'm the first one to acknowledge that we have got a crisis but let's look at this particular facility it's got 27 midwives and on that particular day, there were three midwives on duty. And all three of them have been progressing one woman in labor from morning until half past one. And the, the patients who were pregnant were not attended to. Hence, the advice to say, why don't you, as an operational manager, because you're not even the clinic manager, you're just an operational manager, why don't you get into and help and assist there. If you look at uh, Malamulele Hospital, for instance, it's got 32 midwives. In the month of, of October, they delivered 450 deliveries. You look at this particular facility with 27 midwives. The same period, they delivered 14. So meaning 50% of our midwives go the whole month without touching a patient. As I'm saying, management here and the planning it's 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 quite something that we need to 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 raise sharply there is shortage yeah and perceived shortage look so I, let's I not think, abuse the word shortage i think you've just outlined exactly what the problems might be and it sounds to me that it's a systemic issue and you've got the data that can help you make appropriate interventions the accusation you face from many who criticize you is that all of that you've mentioned notwithstanding, you typically play to the gallery that your job is to try and humiliate these people so you can be seen to be doing something and to raise your political profile. What's your response to that? I think what I can indicate to you, Bongani, is that it depends where you are and, and where are you sitting at that particular time when you really look at this particular issue. If you are a patient, who depend solely on the public service, or you are a family member who has their families are dependent there. You would see that here is a public representative whom we have voted for, who has become our voice, because no one is our voice. Workers have got unions to speak for them, but we as patients, we've got no one to look after our interests. 
Sure, but what I'm asking, what I'm asking is, can't you deal with this thing at a systemic level? You've got the data, you know how to compare this facility with others. In other words, why go there with cameras? Is there is there no way to handle this through the appropriate disciplinary steps according to labor legislation? Instead of going there with cameras, berate these people, cause a big fuss, as you say, it trends, but does it actually necessarily mean change happens? This is what I was trying to come to you to say. When you are a trade union, you will see exactly what you are saying, that our members are being attacked and humiliated. If you are a worker, you are a manager, you will see it that way. Some of the political parties will see it as here is a, a, a politician who really want uh, because they are worried that the public now is starting to have confidence in us by reporting these things to us, not to anyone. Now, you need to understand the sector that we are in. When you get into this, the, 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 the environment, a public environment, whether you are having a, a camera or not, the public always take videos and I can't stop them. I'm a public representative. All I would say to them, you can't take videos of patients, but we as, as politicians, we cannot stop. That's why you see videos trending, which uh, could not be desirable because the public, it's all, we're living in a different time. So the issue here is that whether the MEC should have gone there and see these long queues and see all this immediate intervention that can be done and resolve the problem. The MEC must behave as if this is not an, a health facility where time is important. And the MEC must stand up and say to the patients, I've heard all your cries. Can you allow me to go to the boardroom with my, my management? I will come up with a strategy and resolve. That's when you will see community banning clinics, community doing all that. But you simple say to the operational manager, we can resolve this matter immediately by this to the admin clerk who's opening the files, bring everybody in the next 30 minutes, let the files be open. And believe me, when I came back from the meeting, remember there was a meeting that I had with them outside while they, they were busy implementing this, the patients were all seen, uh, those who were waiting for files to be open. So it means it is possible. It means this, we're dealing with the attitude. We're not dealing with something that requires head office or district office to attend to. We just have something that the unit manager at that given point in time, if they we become firm and say, deal with this matter, they will be able to deal with that. Right. So it is not about grandstanding. This is about the lives. You see, Bongan, if I did not stop the security guards there and there to stop selling masks, and I said, I'm still going to resolve in a boardroom with the clinic manager, another patient just come who is pregnant, about to give birth. Security guards are not nurses. Then they say to her, without a mask, you don't enter. She was going to de and, and deliver five kilometers from the clinic on the roadside. The baby hit the head. Today, the MEC for Health will be chased by you to explain why this happened. Hence, I'm saying gotcha. time in our sector is important. When you are given an opportunity to correct things, correct them, and you will deal with the uh, whatever uh, uh, consequences later, like they always say, uh, this 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 particular principle where they say the end justifies the means. You've got to make right. sure that lives in Doctor the first place. Are protected. Dr. Ramatu, I think that's all the time we have for you this morning. I appreciate uh, you joining us this morning. She says the end justifies the means. Given the critical area in which those people operate, that facility operates, it's perfectly all right for her to speak to the members of staff in the way that she did. Are you convinced? Current events. Developing stories. Tough questions. Your voice making a difference. This is Breakfast with Bongani Bingwa.